Heart disease is one of the leading causes of illness in Canada, but survival rates for patients suffering heart attacks in Manitoba has been dramatically improving, partly as a result of an important decision to consolidate resources and build a team of medical specialists, creating a center of excellence for cardiac care in the province. On this episode of Doctors Care, we'll learn more about the Cardiac Sciences Program, a national leader in the delivery of cardiac services. The Cardiac Sciences Program is a joint initiative of the WRHA, the St. Boniface Hospital, the Health Sciences Centre and the University of Manitoba, but it is primarily based out of the St. Boniface Hospital in Winnipeg. The uh, program um, uh, was conceived probably in the early 2000s. It uh, consisted of bringing people together, bringing professionals together so that they could, in a, in a concerted way, uh, look after patients the right way and offer a good service of high quality in a timely, timely manner. Dr. Alan Mankus is the medical director of the Cardiac Sciences Program. He was recruited in August 2004 from the London, Ontario Health Sciences Program. From the very beginning, increasing the size of the medical team was a priority. The number of anesthetists and cardiologists that have been recruited into Manitoba has grown significantly as a result of the program. That's absolutely correct. We've uh, recruited in the four medical specialties, almost five uh, medical specialties involved in our program, uh, over 50, 55, 56 doctors who are cardiologists and surgeons and anesthetists and intensive care specialists into the program. Uh, and that was one of the crucial needs right at the beginning. We just didn't have enough uh, people. Uh, I was the fifth surgeon. We currently have eight operating surgeons. And cardiology was really uh, shorthanded, and that was a major thrust for us. And we now have uh, 27 based in this hospital and uh, a few more out in the community that we didn't have before. And uh, we still have a long way to go with that part of it, but the recruitment's been, been very positive. One of the specialists who joined the team at the Cardiac Sciences Program during that time was Dr. Michael Rabb. I was a cardiac surgeon at the Health Sciences Centre and then came over here in 2007 to join the team here. I think that was a very positive move for the program. I think it allows us to concentrate all our expertise in one area and it allows the surgeons uh, to, to collaborate not only with each other but with the uh, cardiologists, the interventionalists and the intensivists uh, so we can look after our patients better. Dr. Mankus explained the Cardiac Sciences Program service delivery plan, which keeps the patients as the focus at all times by surrounding those patients with the right people, doctors, allied health, nursing, the latest in technology, in the right facility. A pleasant work environment with plenty of natural light. This new building has been just great for the patients for their recovery and also it's a, it's a great space for families to visit. And I think also for the nurses and, and the other uh, health personnel looking after the patients, it's been a tremendously good place to work. There's lots of natural lighting and even has advantages for the patients because there's less delirium uh, amongst the patients because they know what's day and what's night. And those are the three key elements of that kind of convergence. And if we keep that big picture in mind, the patient's always at the center of that. Now, is this program unique in Canada? Is it happening elsewhere? I'd say that there are many element, elements of it that are very, very unique. And there are many elements of it uh, uh, for which we are the uh, leader, the national leader in these things. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that that's what's happening and the commitment that people have demonstrated uh, who were here and who uh, we have brought here. So that's been a very positive, and the response from the community has been wonderful. Getting a little bit personal here, has the move to Manitoba been satisfying to you and your family? I've uh, loved that part of the move. Uh, I uh, like outdoor activities, uh, winter activities in particular. Uh, my son and I skate almost every weekend. Uh, when there's skating at the, on the ponds or on the river, um, that's a real special thing. Uh, um, I like the snowshoe, uh, um, and we go away to go skiing, uh, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. Tom Milroy is a well-known Winnipeg personality with a deserved reputation for quick, often sarcastic wit. Tom is always ready with a joke. But it was no laughing matter when during a long weekend getaway with friends, Tom began experiencing chest pains. Not horrible pains, just uncomfortable. 
So I said to my wife, hey, we, we should go get it checked out. So we did. On the way, my wife's driving faster and faster, getting nervous because I'm in discomfort. Not, again, not horrible. So we stopped in at Selkirk. It was closer, right? Selkirk uh, Hospital Center there. And I passed out in the waiting room. So they brought me back and off we went to St. Boniface Hospital. And that's when I woke up. I don't remember anything until I woke up in St. Boniface, probably after they put the first uh, couple of stents in. Tom was rushed from the Selkirk Hospital to the St. Boniface Hospital. He gets emotional thinking about what the experience was like for Maureen, his wife of 35 years. There's a doctor and nurse in the ambulance with me, and my wife following behind in our car. A nice trip for her to have, you know, following me. Yeah. So tell me what you know about the procedure. About the procedure, they don't uh, open you up. I did not need the open heart surgery. I had what they call stents in, which gets help open things up at the clogged arteries. So it goes through, I think the first thing goes through your, your groin. They do it that way, all the way up your leg and down here to the heart. And the second set, they go through um, your wrist. And you're sort of semi-awake for that procedure. So that's, uh, that's good, yeah. It's, and I had my second set of stents on Friday. And on Sunday, I'm home. Uh, I quit smoking that day. When somebody comes in with a heart attack, meaning the arteries blocked, uh, it's a life-threatening situation, and the life-saving therapy is to put a balloon and stent to open up the artery. But the disease process doesn't stop there. Uh, if the patient has high cholesterol, diabetes, continues to smoke, the blockages in other arteries, not necessarily one that we stented, can still come back and cause problems. So we don't cure the disease, but we actually cause, uh, allow them to survive the heart attack for them to be able to get better later. Now back working part-time at CGOB, Tom is still putting a smile on the face of his listeners. He's at the refit center four or five times a week and doing his best to watch what he eats. I just want to end this off by saying uh, thank you to all the people at St. Boniface Hospital, all the caregivers, the uh, nurses and doctors, the whole cardiac team. It's just, uh, it's a, a wonderful place. It, re it really is. My role in opening up the artery plays a small role. Uh, it is a life-saving procedure, but over the life of the patient, what makes the biggest difference is what the patient does. Uh, such as diet, healthy activity, their risk factors. So all of those things play a bigger part over the long term. And what are the biggest risk factors? Depends on the patient, but the number three, uh, the worst ones are diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, and smoking. So those are the number one, two, three that are, the patients that I see are usually have one of those risk factors. your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide. The average Canadian will spend their last 10 years in sickness. Change your future at makehealthlast.ca. There are four main areas in the cardiac sciences program. Many are leading the country in terms of innovation and success rates. Cardiology, cardiac anesthesia, cardiac surgery, and intensive care. So in cardiology, we have a program called Code STEMI. A STEMI is a particular kind of heart attack, the way it shows up on an electrocardiogram. Uh, where as soon as an, an individual is experiencing symptoms, they contact uh, emergency medical services, the ambulance comes, the ambulance team, which needed to be trained up to do it, uh, takes an electrocardiogram and transmits it to the cardiologist or emergency room doctor's phone. They look at it and say, yes, this is a STEMI, take them immediately to the cath lab at St. Boniface, uh, where they come and have an angioplasty. The code STEMI allows the patient to bypass emergency, and the goal is to have the blocked artery opened up within 90 minutes. We've achieved probably an average in the, in the low 70 minute range. So uh, that's been a very successful program. Right now we're limited by the radius of where you can get to by ground transport and ambulance, but with the introduction by the uh, 
by the government of the helicopter uh, services. Uh, we're working with them to expand that range to once again have a, a radius of 45 minutes or so. And that'll t encompass 80 to 90 percent of the population of Manitoba, so I'm terribly enthusiastic about that. Cardiac anesthesia, the people who put the patients to sleep and monitor them during the course of surgery, are making tremendous advances in a particular type of ultrasound, where almost every patient gets an echocardiogram through a tube in the throat after they're asleep. This is the uh, echocardiography machine. Uh, the transesophageal probe is here, we then, it's into the patient and then now attached to the machine. And this is just an example of some of the imaging that we get. You can see there's four chambers of the heart here. It's so the left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, right ventricle, tricuspid valve, and right atrium. And we also have the ability to put what's known as color on here, so we can put a color map on here that will tell us if there's any regurgitation or leaking of the heart valve, and that's that bright color that you see now, so there's a bit of a leak on that one valve. But uh, more importantly, we can look at heart function, so we look at the wall motion to make sure that it's normal we can get a sense of the global function of the heart, whether it's abnormal or depressed, and again, looking at both ventricles and the valves. Um, by moving the probe, we can sort of get to different areas of the heart, and by doing this, I'm now showing you the aortic valve, and uh, it's in cross-section here, and you can easily see the three cusps of the aortic valve, so the detail that we're able to get is, is excellent, and it really helps uh, guide the surgeons uh, for ma in many cases if they're operating on this valve or in fact if we replace a valve we can also look at the artificial valve and assure the surgeons that everything is functioning normally and it's looking looking good. So again we've learned to rely on this monitor in, in pretty much every case that we do so it's, it's, uh, it's really an important piece of equipment for us. Uh, and in surgery as well, with the new programs that we've instituted, the mechanical circulatory devices, uh, which are devices for people whose hearts are failing, either slowly or acutely. And we have a series of devices from a short-term, intermediate, and long-term device to help support the heart and the circulation. And, and we've saved many, many, many lives with this technology. Dr. Menkes allowed us in to observe what this talented team consider a fairly routine heart bypass operation to relieve angina and reduce the risk of death from coronary artery disease. During this sophisticated procedure, a vein from the patient's leg was grafted to the coronary arteries to bypass narrowings and improve blood supply to the heart muscle. Uh, this is a, a man in his late 60s who had uh, what's called acute coronary syndrome last week and a non-STEMI, which is a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. It's just a particular kind of heart attack that has uh, a particular appearance on the electric cardiogram. During the procedure, the perfusionist monitors the heart-lung machine, which allows the patient's heart and lung to be completely stopped for the duration of the surgery. Allowing the surgeon to operate on a still, unbeating heart. Prior to surgery, Dr. Menkes would review the coronary angiogram and estimate the number of bypass grafts to be performed. A severe narrowing right there, and so that's about a 90% narrowing, if not more. The final decision, however, takes place once the heart is exposed and examined. Each member of the attending medical team is specially trained for cardiac procedures, and recruiting and training these specialized team members has been a priority for Dr. Menkes and the Cardiac Sciences Program. Once the grafts are in place, the heart and lungs are restarted and the patient is carefully monitored. You know, the, the clamp came off the heart, the heart started beating on its own, and now we're just hooking up the, uh, the vein bypasses have to be hooked up onto the aorta as well as uh, down at the heart, uh, whereas the internal mammary is already hooked up to the artery uh, that goes to your left arm, so that has its own blood supply. So, um, Dr. Horn's just completing the last of uh, the hookups and, uh, and, uh, and when will he be up and about walking around? Um, he should be uh, sitting at the side of the bed with no tube in his throat in, uh, in a few hours. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, walking from bed to chair tomorrow and on from there.
Wonderful. I think you'll need to put it Fantastic. Thank you very much for allowing us to be here. I appreciate it. I'll grab you a microphone. You can see them smiling. Yeah, I think so. Can you see us smiling? <laughs> Our intensivists um, st are looking after the patients 24-7, so they don't stop at uh, 6 or 7 o'clock. Uh, they sleep in-house, and this is unique in Canada and one of the most uh, uh, forward-thinking and forward-looking uh, groups in the entire world. And so I think that our patients get really optimal care uh, at all times because of this. And, uh, and so that has been a major, major innovation in our program. An important aspect of the cardiac sciences program is related to monitoring safety and human performance. The notion of um, a patient safety uh, is a, a relatively new in medicine. Error management and safety and efficiency have been in industry, in the private sector, in the military for a number of years, probably since the 40s and 50s. And, uh, Error management in particular came into medicine starting in the 1980s with a number of analogies to the aviation industry, which has done really quite a good job in, uh, in managing error. Uh, and then probably it was the 2000s before uh, medicine uh, took it to heart, no pun intended, but, uh, um, and started to do it more and more. Someone who knows a great deal about the aviation industry is Ralph Dyke, a retired Air Canada pilot. During a routine medical checkup, he discovered he had a heart murmur, a valve problem that would require more study. He was monitored over the next eight years until the valve needed surgery to repair. You were monitored for eight years and then you required surgery. Yes, there are, there are um, certain rules that the, the cardiologists follow and uh, uh, obviously, it's an area I don't know everything about. Uh, however, they, in, the, uh, in the testing, the echocardiogram, uh, the day came when uh, they said, okay, the parameters are such that uh, we should consider the operation and uh, uh, take care of the problem. You had the opportunity to see Dr. Menkes and his team modeling the safety checks, similar to what you were used to seeing in the aviation industry. Yes, that's right. Uh, I was told that uh, I woke up a bit early uh, it was a very interesting scene. Uh, I woke up, I was mentally clear, I could see where I was, I knew that uh, I, I was in a recovery room, uh, but the scene that I saw around myself uh, was the most impressive thing to me. Um, Dr. Mankus, my uh, uh, surgeon, was briefing this team on my care. And I saw these young men and women. He was telling them how the operation had gone, his concerns, things that he was watching, things that uh, he would like them to monitor. And uh, I saw this team of people as the people who were taking care of my life at that point. In a sense, when we arrive at the gate with the airplane and the people are getting off, they only know that they are where they want it to be. They are not aware of the fact uh, that we had special little briefings on the flight deck because it was going to be a very icy landing. And it was all we could do to get the airplane in its proper position so that we would complete a safe landing. A lot of people are part of that, that big picture all they know is they're walking down that bridge and they got there safely. Did you make that connection, that analogy, as you were lying there? I did very much so because, you see, they're standing there. They're, in my opinion, very specialized people, every one of them. Every one of them has my life at their interest. I do the same thing on the flight deck of the airplane. I want everybody to walk up that bridge. I, I could just see in their eyes uh, and I guess because I woke up a bit early, I saw some smiles. I woke up and I knew where I was and I saw this team. It was, it was that moment of excellence, that moment of having arrived safely. 
The operation went well. I'm able to live uh, as, as normal as I always did. I, uh, I engage in a lot of activities and uh, family things. Um, I enjoy landscaping and gardening and building and just finished a rec room for my daughter. And uh, I, I live uh, the way I always did and it, uh, it's been a wonderful thing. And uh, yeah, I've, uh, I, I enjoy life the way it is, it's, it's great. Dr. Mankus and his team believe that research is essential to offering a leading clinical program. For this reason, the Cardiac Sciences Program is committed to supporting researchers and their important work. Dr. Amir Rivandi came to the Cardiac Sciences Program from Toronto. I was given a great opportunity because not only that I treat patients, but I get to have a research lab that allows me to understand the things that I see in patients, how can I help them? And the opportunity here was that I was given a lab and uh, financial resources to be able to pursue those endeavors. And that is what was unique here, to have somebody who works with the patients and also gets to do research at the same time. That is a big appeal to you. It is a big appeal. You work directly with patients. You like that aspect? Absolutely. That is what I got into medicine for. That is why uh, I get the most amount of satisfaction for. Uh, the other part of it is the scientific endeavors that not only helps one patient at a time, but can potentially help a bigger population. So that's where the interest part for the research comes in. Good morning, I'm Boyd Kozak with the latest QX104 news update sponsored by Pictures, Frames and More.com. A familiar voice to his many fans is Boyd Kozak, who continues to entertain on Winnipeg Radio and has since 1958. Boyd had heart surgery to repair several blocked arteries. About four and a half years ago, my son and I, Darren, uh, were walking on the Assiniboine River in uh, February, and um, I would walk maybe a block or two, and I couldn't keep up to him, and what's the matter? I said, I'm, I'm older than you, settle down, I, uh, I'm running out of breath. And uh, I had noticed it before, uh, weeks before. He said, you know, you, sh you should see a doctor. You shouldn't be running out of breath. So uh, the next week, uh, I called uh, my good doctor, uh, Dr. Bartlett, in the Medical Arts Building, and um, he's a very experienced doctor. And he didn't waste any time. He said, you have angina. I said, I thought angina came with pain. He said, no. He said, we're going to set you up with an angiogram. But it may be a while. They were able to schedule you rather quickly. A week later, uh, I get a call from the cardiologist to come and see him, and, and he uh, calls me into the office. Nice man, Dr. Craker. He's just the best. He's so thorough. And he puts the CD into, into the computer, and he, he says, here, I'm going to explain this to you. So there it is. There's my angiogram on the, on the television. and. Uh, it's all Greek to me. Because, yeah, we have blockage here, blockage there, blockage here. He says, uh, you're an urgent case. So he set up the, the meeting, and I wandered over to, to St. Bonavis a couple of days later and had a meeting with this movie actor. Handsome. Just a really nice person. While Boyd was bumped from his first scheduled date, his surgery did proceed within just a few weeks. Actually, I helped get up on the operating table, and they're on you like a blanket. The next thing I know, there's a pinprick, the masks come over me, or a mask comes over me, and I wake up six hours later, and I'm in ICU. Noisy, lights, camera, action. Wires everywhere. And who's standing over top me? Dr. Rapp, Mr. Hollywood. Well, Kozak, he says, you have a record for the hospital. I said, what do you, what do you mean? I was really tired. 
He said, we were going to do five, but we did seven. Tell me about the care you received from your nurses after your surgery. I don't know their names, uh, but there was one in particular. She was pregnant and so very kind. And when she came in that first night in Step Down, I, uh, I saw her, she had a rabbit's head and paws. And I shook my head and I said, you know what I just saw? You had a rabbit's head and paws. She said, that's the drug. She said, I've never seen that before. I don't do drugs, and believe me, I don't intend to. But it was, it was really quite something. But the kindness was amazing. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, God saw fit uh, for me to, to be given into the hands of, of Dr. Rabb and Dr. Craker and Dr. Bartlett. And, uh, so I'm gonna keep trucking along uh, as long as the, uh, the valves hold out. And, if there's nothing else you keep from this little interview, please tell people not to worry because they're in the very best of care and in some of the smartest hands in the world when they go into cardiac care at St. Bonifus Hospital. It's fabulous. Thank you. No, that's a super place. If you're going to have a heart attack, go to St. Bonifus Hospital. Doesn't that sound funny to say? No, a great spot. Thanks very much. The thing I'm most proud of is the way the entire team, physicians, surgeons, nurses, allied health, social workers, the whole bunch uh, work together uh, for the benefit of the patients because in order to do things safely and efficient, efficiency is really important because if we're not efficient, um, we can't do as many patients as we should given our structure. So we have to be as efficient as possible, and that allows us to do more patients uh, uh, safely. So um, all of it is, is really important. I can't say that there's one thing that's more than, uh, than another. I've been to lots of centers around, around the world, especially in North America, and so I have a fair bit of experience, and I can say that the care that the Manitobans receive here, especially in the cardiac sciences, is bar none the best in the world, one of the best in the world. Uh, the, the faculty here are dedicated, they're committed, uh, and the resources are here. So I'm excited to be a part of the group here and uh, be able to help Manitobans.